Hi, I'm Brendan Brown. Welcome to Talent on Tap. I head up recruiting here at LinkedIn. Today we're talking about LinkedIn's 2020 global talent trends. And there's four of them with one theme. Let's get into it. First trend we're gonna tackle is employee experience. So what is employee experience? It's the idea of shifting both mindset and practices from a company where employees work for the company and now shifting to really where the company really works for the employees. We know that talent largely is the number one thing at any organization, and it's that talent that's gonna help that company win. In order to do that, prioritizing what the experience is for employees day to day is something that can really make a difference in terms of retention, commitment, quality of work, quality of life, et cetera. Second trend is people analytics. Not necessarily a new topic, but I can tell you having spoken to many of our customers at LinkedIn and my peers in the recruiting industry, the varied investment in people analytics is pretty significant. So one, you need to start building a team that has that capability, but really the goal is to start to evolve human resources from what has been a legacy risk management organization, a uh, policy-driven organization, and instead thinking about how can I advise the business? What are those trends that I'm starting to see or insights that I'm starting to see in some of our data that the business really truly needs to understand? Things to think about in terms of what you could measure, you can actually measure employee experience. A lot of organizations will do surveys on a quarterly, annual, or biannual basis. Identifying skill gaps is something that a people analytics team can help out with almost instantaneously. And think about that as a recruiter. If you want to understand truly where the skill gaps are within your company, for example, maybe an engineering leader thinks that there's enough Python skills to deliver the roadmap, but you take a look at the skills within the company and you realize mm -mm, it's not there. If you can bring that conversation with some data to that engineering leader, I can guarantee you that that conversation will be different than you had in the past. Other things like uh, evaluating how effective your recruiting channels actually are. Competitive intelligence is something that's very analytically and data driven. But all of these lead to you becoming much more of an influencer and your credibility going up significantly. So I believe that people analytics will be the backbone of HR as we move forward into the future. It's gonna become a table stakes thing for any talent team. If it's something that you're not thinking about or not prioritizing, you can start small. Uh, and if you already have a team, there's nothing to do but go forward and continue to get more sophisticated in the work that you're doing. Next big trend is internal recruitment. Some people might call it internal mobility. Very, very, very important. My experience in talking to my peers recently has been that this is something that lots of folks are prioritizing. So internal recruitment is, is just that, it's moving people around the company. But what I would say needs to change is the fact that historically at many companies, people move around the organization in a way that is, may not be that intentional or that strategic. So we as talent professionals and recruitment professionals need to think about what role we can play in doing a few things. One, making sure that we're proposing strategies and processes to make sure we move talent around the company in a way that helps us achieve what the business needs to get done. But I can tell you from a retention point of view, if you have a strong commitment to internal recruitment, a good process to back it up, and good transparency and awareness of where all the opportunities are, retention will have a nice benefit because people stay longer. So there's a massive motivation to make sure that we're prioritizing our internal talent in a way that's gonna give us the impact that we need for the business. The fourth trend is multi-generational workforce. So today we have Gen Z, Gen X, millennials, baby boomers often working together in organizations across the world. It's a really unique blend of experiences and demographics. And I think it's a massive opportunity. Oftentimes it is not really unleashed or maximized. First and foremost, it's good to understand what these generations are all about. And the fact that they may value different things, may behave differently, uh, may find purpose in different ways. So a few companies I've talked to have done interesting things like reverse mentoring. 
having baby boomer workers uh, have a mentor who is from Gen Z and formalize those conversations and create a dynamic in which people can learn from each other in a meaningful way. So understanding and hiring people to help build a product, sell a product, develop a service that will meet the needs of their peer out in the market is really, really important. If I'm 22 years old trying to build a product for people that are 60, chances are I won't be able to build a great product. But if I'm 22 and I can help recruit someone who's 60 to help me build that product so it really meets the needs of that generation, good things are gonna happen. Am I leaping to conclusions about someone who's from a younger generation? Am I uh, bringing bias about thinking about someone who's in a, a generation who's older than I am uh, and finding out if there are people that can help be a sounding board or even a mirror for me in terms of making sure that they check me if um, making assumptions or bringing bias to the table that I really need to, to drop and get over. So those are four trends that are in our report this year. And then there's also one theme, which is empathy. And I think this is absolutely critical in organizations today. Having empathy and really putting yourself in someone else's shoes, I think is monumental because empathy, when it's a part of the fabric of an organization, I know that my fear would be reduced. I'm not gonna be afraid to go into a meeting and to get a bunch of hardcore feedback from someone that then may crush my confidence. I might become less likely to speak up next time in a meeting. So empathy, I think, is sort of the currency that can sort of flow through an organization to make sure that people can actually do their best work. But it's something that needs to be active. So I believe it can be a differentiating factor from organizations that are good to organizations that are spectacular in terms of people feeling like they can be themselves, they can use their own voice in a way that means something, and they can have a set of relationships that are much deeper than a transactional office relationship that many of us have experienced in our careers to date. So there's our four trends, our one theme for 2020. Let us know if there are things on your mind that you wanna be talking about. We will definitely be digging into these topics more as we roll through 2020 and looking forward to seeing you next time on Talent on Tap.